Let's suppose we want to test out the performance of a boat like the Volvo Ocean 65. Length about 20 meters, cost of about $5 million each to build the hulls, and we'd like to test a smaller version in a tow tank so that we can actually figure out what's going on and do some development. Let's tank test different shapes of 1 meter models that cost about $1,000 each. Well, let's see what we need to keep similar. We've got our viscosity, pressure, inertia, gravity, and surface tension forces to think about. We can probably ignore surface tension. Again, because this is a big system with no really tight radii of curvature. The whole point of these things is to go fast. So inertia is going to be important. The pressure forces, they're going to be mostly hydrostatic, keeping the boat floating. And the viscous forces will account for friction uh, al along the walls. So we better at least think about the Reynolds number. Gravity is going to control the waves that we're producing as we move through the water. And that's going to be a big source of our resistance because these are fast boats that have to push a lot of water out of the way. So we're going to have to also think about fruit number similarity to see if we get the same sort of behavior. So the question now is, can we match both fruit number for gravity waves and Reynolds number for viscous effects and separation, things like that in the boundary layer? Well, if we look at the Reynolds number of our model, it's going to be equal to the velocity that the model's traveling at times the length of the model divided by the kinematic viscosity for the model. And that's going to have to be equal to the same quantities for the prototype. The velocity of the prototype's top traveling at, the length of the prototype, and the viscosity in the prototype system. And that'll be equal to the Reynolds number of the prototype. If we want our Reynolds numbers to match model and prototype, then we'll have to set the model velocity so that it makes them equal. The model velocity will be equal to the prototype velocity times the length of the prototype divided by the length of the model. The viscosity of the model divided by the viscosity for the prototype, all times the prototype velocity. So that viscosity is going to be around 1 if we are working in water. We're not going to get much change between the model conditions and the prototype conditions. The length of the prototype, it's 20 times longer than the length of the model. So as a result, we're going to wind up with about 20 times the velocity of the prototype. Now what is the velocity of the prototype? These things go, in our range of interest anyway, around 10 to 30 knots. Very fast boats. That translates into around 5 to 15 meters per second. So that's large. That's going to translate into somewhere around 100 to 300 meters per second. That's not practical. How could we fix this? The only way I can see is if we filled the tow tank with a really low viscosity fluid for our model, that would get our model velocity back down. It went up by a factor of 20 because of the length change. We'd have to change the viscosity by a substantial factor like 10 to get it back down again. So we could fill the tow tank with something like mercury or gasoline or propane. I don't think that's a good idea. I think we're going to be stuck with water, just like our prototype, at around 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. So I think it's not going to be practical to get Reynolds number similarity. We're going to have to just settle for the fact that our Reynolds numbers are large and that we will lose some of the uh, effects that are happening in the boundary layer. But maybe we can capture what's going on with the gravity waves if we get the fruit number to be the same. So the fruit number for the model will be equal to the velocity for the model divided by the square root of gravity for the model and the length of the model. And that should be equal to the same thing for the prototype, the velocity of the prototype, divided by the square root of gravity for the prototype and length for the prototype. 
Now, in a practical world, we're stuck with the same gravitational forces in both of our situations, both the prototype and our test situation. So we've got a limited set of things we can change between the prototype fruit number and the model fruit number. Fortunately, this is actually going to turn out well for us, because if we rearrange this, we'll find that the velocity for the model must be equal to the square root of the length of the model over the square root of the length of the prototype times the velocity for the prototype. That'll be equal to 0.22 times the velocity for the prototype. And that is actually practical. So we can't match up the Reynolds number model and prototype unless we go to some kind of an exotic and probably quite dangerous fluid. So we're going to be stuck saying the Reynolds number is high and that we're not too worried about the detailed frictional effects. We can make the fruit number the same so that the gravity waves in the wake will be the same and that's going to be a big factor up here. Our gravity waves are a lot of what's going to determine the drag on the boat as we're trying to move through the water at high speed. So our model velocity needs to be about a quarter of our prototype velocity, and that's actually practical in a tank test in our tow tank. That's going to get us moving at speeds on the order of 1 to 3 meters per second. So that's how you go through the scaling process. You can't always scale everything to match perfectly, but you can make at least some of the important quantities match so that you can draw some practical conclusions from your experiments.